OnePlus. This name stands for speed and value. After a few missteps, they now want to get back on track. Well, here's my review of the OnePlus 11. OnePlus's design language is a little bit, let's say, changeable. They seem to flip a coin that decides on whether the camera element is round or square this year. I wasn't a fan of the design at first, and I don't love it now, but the way it reflects the light is quite something. In the camera element, there is a starry sky and the element itself blends the light like a black hole. Although I prefer matte glass, I found the color and the reflective surface fancier this time around. The front is made out of Gorilla Glass Victus, the back Gorilla Glass 5, in glossy green or matte black. The overall shape is also very well done. It feels super slim, yet sturdy and ergonomic. Definitely more compact than other smartphones with an equally large battery and display. Play. The alert slider to switch between sound vibration and silent is back and the IP64 certification means that the device should not be submerged but can withstand water splashes. So a step backwards from the predecessor. On the other hand, there is progress in the so-called bionic vibration motor. It's the largest and most powerful on the market. It's so sharp and precise, really remarkable. The display is also sharp and precise. 6.7 inch with OLED technology, 1 to 100 hertz refresh rate and the Quad HD Plus resolution, that is 525 pixels per inch. The corners are rounded, the sides as well, very subtle, so it has only advantages in my eyes. The fingerprint sensor is unfortunately not ultrasonic, but it's in a good position and recognized me fast. The peak brightness in HDR content is 1300 nits, but a maximum of 800 nits is reached in everyday use. It's a bit less than the Pixel 7 Pro, Galaxy S23 and the iPhone 14 Pro. OnePlus has managed the optical illusion that the top and the bottom bezel look equally thin, although it is a bit bigger at the bottom. All in all, it's a beautiful display and a real pleasure to use, which is certainly due to the installed hardware. A Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with 128GB of UFS 3.1 or 265GB of twice as fast UFS 4.0 storage. Alongside, there are 8 or 16GB of the latest fastest RAM. The OnePlus 10T could withstand permanent load for an above average amount of time. The OnePlus 11 scores worse in my test. However, it is still average. Apps open quickly, stay open forever and if I expand the RAM boost to a complete ridiculous 24GB of RAM, they last even longer. OnePlus is good at performance and it clearly shows. OnePlus promises 4 years of Android and 5 years of security updates. That's a record together with Samsung and even more than Google themselves. It's possible because they joined the code bases with Oppo, but there are some optical differences. The whole thing is far from pure Android. The system color can change based on the wallpaper, but otherwise the software feels much more sober and less playful than pure Android. The sometimes extensive animations gave me the feeling that the software runs a bit slower than it actually does. It is unusual for a OnePlus device because they used to have super fast animations. I got used to the software after a few days, but it's still not the selling point for me as it was in the past. In the past, the OnePlus camera always was a negative, but then they spent $120 million to Hasselblad to improve their camera. And they did. In my opinion, the OnePlus 9 had the best camera back in the days, but they never quite improved on that. And now in here, there's some new tech. At least the OnePlus 11 has new sensors. The Sony IMX890 with 50 megapixel is a bit smaller than the sensor in the Galaxy S23 Ultra, Pixel 7 Pro or even OnePlus 10 Pro. I like how soft and natural the photos look. They are not over-processed as many other current smartphones. The colors are vivid but not overdone, especially with food, which looks great. Compared to the iPhone or Pixel in particular, I like that the OnePlus colors are warmer. The photos look friendlier and as a result, they are often closer to reality. The dynamic range is high but not artificial. The main camera can keep up with the best of the best in my opinion and only falls short in terms of sharpness compared to an iPhone in the Pro RAW mode or the Galaxy with its 200 megapixel. The 48 megapixel ultra wide angle has an autofocus and macro mode. It's 
Its aperture is quite large at f2 and the sensor is even significantly larger than on any iPhone Pixel or Galaxy. And it showed in the photos. The iPhone is clearly beaten here in terms of dynamic range and noise performance. The colors are also warm and friendly. In the darkness the night mode has a short shutter release and produces vivid but a bit too contrasty photos. The 32 megapixel sensor for the 2 times zoom is relatively small and the f2 aperture is relatively large. While I don't think that it is a bad camera, I think that the main sensor is so sharp these days that zooming digital would look just as good. A telephoto lens only makes sense from 3 to 4 times and OnePlus falls far behind the competition in this area. I mean 5 times looks just bad. Videos are supported with 4K 60fps, in the past 120fps were possible, 8K remains at 24fps. I don't get why there's a downgrade but the quality is good. The selfie camera could be a little little bit more wide angle but I think the pictures are great. They look nice and sharp but the skin is nice and smooth. In tech reviews the general tone is that the Pixel has the best camera and OnePlus has a mediocre one. But I compared the two a lot and often found that the OnePlus colors look a little bit warmer and therefore more realistic and friendly. So the OnePlus 11 has a great main and ultra wide angle camera and only falls short in terms of zoom. Nonetheless I'm a little bit disappointed in the Hasselblad cooperation because Leica and Zeiss they they go way way further with their smartphones. Although the device doesn't really feel like it, there's a large 5000 mAh battery inside. Thanks to the new efficient processor, it lasts longer than the predecessor in my case. I had 4 to 5 hours of screen on time, that is okay-ish but not insanely good. With my Galaxy S23 Ultra I had 2 hours more of screen on time despite the same technology with the processor and the battery size. So I think maybe OnePlus will have an update that improves the battery life, but I would never wait for such an update and I would never promise such an update to you guys. So I hope it will be improved, but I'm not sure whether it is. The OnePlus 10 Pro could charge with a maximum of 80 watt, the 10T with 150 watt and the 11 with 100 watt. No idea where exactly the 50 watt were lost, but in charging speed the difference is fortunately smaller than expected. I measured 25 minutes from 0 to 100%. The 10T with a slightly smaller battery was capable of charging to 100% 5 minutes faster. So I think that's bearable. It's just 10 minutes for 50% of battery. I love the security that gives me in emergency situations. I only have two criticisms. The USB-C port is no longer 3.1 but 2.0 and wireless charging is missing. For me personally, neither is a bitter loss but it's an unnecessary move. Conclusion, OnePlus is returning back to its old strengths and weaknesses and those weaknesses were taken into account for a lower price tag and $700 is quite a good price but not exactly cheap and the Google Pixel is about the same price and of course the OnePlus has the twice as fast processor, four times as fast charging and even one year of more software updates but it does not have as great of a tele lens and I do personally prefer the Pixel software. So OnePlus is still a little bit strumbling but I think they are back on track and I'm curious to see what they are up next. That's it for me, see you in the next one, bye.